do you want to see us slack snap the only piece of Highline gear that isn't redundant? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hey, I'm Ryan Jinks, and welcome to Slack Snap, where we break test gear to see what things break at in a real life situation, since most of us don't Highline in a lab. The test we're doing today is the only part of Highline that is not redundant, your leash. Now, a threaded leash is not redundant because you only tie in once, but you're gonna see how they break, which is quite interesting. I did not know this before I did this test on how they break, when they break. And then we test several leash options of things that don't have tubular padding on them. And we did this on our previous slack snap machine, which was several two to ones off of trees and us pulling with my van, which was an enormous amount of work. Um, it did give us the same results as I have now, which is a nice, beautiful, shiny rectangle in my garage. And, and then, way, way easier to do 30 or 50 brake tests in a day compared to 30 brake tests in that yard would take over eight hours plus two hours of prep and two hours of cleanup. So even though I have the much better system, I want to show you the results we got when we did originally break these leashes. So our first test was a new black threaded leash and we pulled it until we got to 13.34 kilonewtons when the outer webbing broke first. We continued to pull until the inside rope broke at 16.46 kilonewtons. I was shocked about how much of a difference between the outer and the inside broke, and that doesn't mean it's redundant. We don't get true redundancy with the outer sheath. It's still just one tie-in point, and it is nice that it does break in two stages, the outer and then the inner, but you have to uh, first of all, achieve 13 kilonewtons, and you also have to not exceed 16 kilonewtons. So good luck with that if you're trying to push the life of your leash's limits. So the next test was the new red threaded leash, and the outer tubular webbing broke at 13.79 kilonewtons, and then the inside rope broke at 16.24 kilonewtons, giving us very similar results as the previous black threaded leash test. This webbing is completely empty um, and it did not break inside of this knot even though the tubular webbing broke right at where it pinches it right there and I dressed these figure eights the best I could but um, they just get mangled because only one strand is being pulled at such a high tension. Uh, this thing is loose here but this thing's hard as a rock. Another interesting thing to notice is in this time lapse, you can see how much the rope is stretching before it finally breaks. We're getting on average about 75% stretch, but that is technically after the tubular broke as well. We don't get that when we're actually taking a whip on a high line, also mostly because we're not putting 13 kilonewtons on our whips. So our next test was my old green threaded leash, which I've had for at least five years. The outer sheath broke at 8 kilonewtons, which is more than 5 kilonewtons less than a new leash, which just shows that the outer sheath does take all the beating. And then we kept pulling and got 14 kilonewtons on the inner rope, which is a little bit less than a new leash, but not as much of a loss as the outer sheath was. See in this time lapse as well how much it stretched before it broke it seems to be a little bit less than a new leash was. Tubular webbing broke at only 1,800-ish pounds of force. This up here broke at 3,100, or no, about, no, this broke at 3,000 pounds of force right here. Um, and this whole thing just got mangled in here. My next test was the old blue leash that I had, and I did not use it as much as my green leash. And so when we broke it, the outer sheath broke at 8.9 kilonewtons, and the inner rope broke at 15.1 kilonewtons. I found it interesting that no matter how much I dressed the knots, that they looked really, really gnarly, and they were rock hard after our brake tests. I saw Jeremy Beard posted on Slack chat that his leash was old and he was wondering if he should continue to use it. 
it's about five years old and it's been on about maybe 80 high lines. So he mailed it to me to break test and we did discover that yes, he can continue to use it. Get it? Anyways, so uh, he had a giant tail sticking out of his leash, which comes from it, you know, you can burn the ends all you want, but they're not together. And then this doesn't have the same memory or whatever as the tubular. So every time it stretches, it continues to come out more and more. Now, I don't prefer to have a circumcised leash. It looks obnoxious. It is kind of annoying to tie when you have the two layers. I prefer it to feel like one rope. And if you dip, you cut it off even, and you dip it in a formic acid formula, like I have here, and you just dip in the tip of it, then it looks like this does. Um, and, and this is an old leash, and I don't have any tail coming out of it. I have enough here for probably a thousand high lines, so if you're ever in the Lodi, California area, stop by and dip your circumcised rope and we can ceremoniously un uncircumcise your rope. Anyways, when we did break Jeremy's leash, the outer sheath did break at 7.7 .7 kilonewtons, which is almost half of what a new leash is. So no, technically it's not um, ideal to use anymore. But the inner rope did technically break at 15.7 kilonewtons and we never really put on more than one, never two, on a leash. So technically it is safe, it's just at some point you will want to retire it. Why wait until it breaks to do so? Our next test was to test the 9mm dynamic rope that's inside of our threaded leashes by itself. These were brand new and they broke at 14.9 kilonewtons and 14 kilonewtons. So the 9mm dynamic ropes broke 2 kilonewtons less than the 9.5 millimeter dynamic ropes that are inside threaded. And then we broke Jeremy Beard's 9.5 millimeter dynamic rope that was inside his threaded leash, but just by itself, and it broke at 13.8 kilonewtons, which over time, the 9.5 millimeter dynamic rope is breaking now at a new 9 millimeter dynamic rope strength. It did lose a little bit, but not nearly as much as the outer sheath does, as that does deteriorate over time. We also did one sample each of the following. We did nine millimeter static, and that broke at 16 kilonewtons even. We also did an 11 millimeter static, and that broke at 27.6 kilonewtons, way stronger than all our other tests. And then I grabbed the oldest thing I own, which is an 11 millimeter, 13 year old static rope. Wow. Oh, I can't believe it's still holding. I can't believe it's still holding. I wonder if it's because the knot's slipping. Keeps spreading the pressure out. Eventually this will break. Hopefully. Huh, interesting. A little anticlimactic there. And that broke at 13.1 kilonewtons, which is as strong as the tubular webbing on a leash, ironically, but it is about half of a new rope. It just shows how much they deteriorate over time. An interesting observation, since we're full of observations today, is that a threaded leash is 13 millimeters in diameter, total, combined. And this is an 11 millimeter dynamic. And this, this is dynamic, not the static. We did test only static 11 mils. Um, this is substantially stronger than a threaded leash. Uh, however, this deteriorates over time, whereas this, at least the integral part of the rope inside, does not deteriorate over time. And this is skinnier. If you had a 13 millimeter dynamic rope, it would be double the strength as a 13 millimeter stuffed tubular leash. Since we only put one or two kilonewtons on a leash when we do fall, um, this is plenty fine, breaking at 13 and then 16 kilonewtons. But this or a thicker one would break above 25 kilonewtons. However, it is easier to climb a leash the bigger it is. So I do like grabbing this 13 millimeter leash when I'm climbing it versus even I can tell a difference with an 11 millimeter. 
Now this isn't bad, but if you try to go with just a nine millimeter, it's a little too skinny to comfortably climb after you take a whip. So how much force do we even put on our leashes? A few months back, we went to Kirby Cove, which is a beautiful line in San Francisco, and we decided to whip for science. What we did is I tied in and whipped three times on the classic threaded leash, and then I tied into an 11 millimeter dynamic rope and whipped three times. We will do dynamic versus static in future tests, but I just wanted to see what kind of forces we're getting on a 70 meter long pink tube high line that feels very stretchy and soft when we fall. And for the record, I weigh about 160 pounds. My name's Elliot and I am going to whip for science. Woo! You! What's it say? 2.12. How heavy are you? Uh, let's call it 195. Yeah! 2.26. And uh, woo! <laughs> I got 162. Yeah, yeah. 1.72, baby. <laughs> oh, leg catch. 1.66. So we basically got the same results for both leashes, except this one was a little bit less in most of the cases because it you can really feel that this does stretch a little bit more. Either way, these things are holding 13 and 16 kilonewtons and 25 plus kilonewtons for these. And we're only putting on around two kilonewtons when we whip, at least on the stretchy longer lines. So that means we have plenty of safety ratio. If you just tie your knot right and you get buddy checked, which is very important since you cannot make a mistake with that, then you are absolutely fine once you're tied in to the high line. You're probably safer than the photographer standing at the cliff edge, not clipped in. Regardless of how safe these are, you're gonna have a really hard time convincing your mother that this is the only thing keeping you alive while you walk through the sky. Therefore, you shouldn't highline.